a few months ago a company called Venus Optics reached out to me and they asked me if I would be interested in trying out one of their lenses that specialized for macro photography I've never taken you into the macro world before and that's mainly because I've never properly explored it until now Stick around for the entire video because we're going to plunge into a universe much larger than we assume it to be. Welcome to the Macroverse. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kenneth Lawrence and this is the Laowa 90mm 2x ultra macro lens. It's a brilliant piece of glass that I didn't know I needed till it was sent to me in the mail. Today we're going to take a little break from fancy national parks. We're going to keep tigers on hold. We're going to keep snow leopards in the Himalayas and we're going to keep foxes in the desert. That is because there is so much biodiversity to explore in just local parks. Macro photography is a genre that I haven't explored in depth, but I'm hoping that today's session is going to change that. My gear for today is the Canon R5C a Godox mini flash and of course a diffuser that some of you may already be acquainted with. Thanks to the lovely folks at Venus Optics, I got the 90mm 2x macro lens. Now this is a manual lens which means the iris and the focus are completely manual. A lot of you guys might like uh, the convenience of autofocus lens and being able to adjust your iris through the body. Apart from butterflies and wasps, carpenter ants were a plenty. Though I wanted to find a subject that didn't move too much, I thought I'd give the ants a quick shot. Seems like there are some carpenter ants right here and they're going up the tree as well. I think we can start with this subject because this might be relatively simpler than searching for something. That seems to be headquarters right there. I think these ants that are moving right here might make a very good macro shot. I'm just going to find a sweet spot where there is not too much ant movement. There are a couple of ants in this region which aren't moving up or down and we're going to focus on just these guys. Because I wasn't going to be focus stacking, my depth of field was barely a couple of millimeters. I eventually made one satisfactory image. Right, no ants on this. Headquarters is down below and uh, I think I am a good foot away from them. None of us will be biting each other today. <laughs> After a little warm-up session with the ants, I was hoping to find some spiders. They would be a lot less jumpy, giving me ample time to make a detailed macro photograph. It's the onset of winter and this may not be the ideal season for certain types of macro. To be honest, I do not know the correct season for spiders. They have to be out here somewhere, but it's going to take a lot more exploring to find them. They would be perfect because they'd be in their web. They wouldn't be moving around too much and I would have plenty of time to stick with one subject and hopefully get 
or story with them. So I have been walking back and forth on this track for a while just to be able to see what macro life I can find and all I have found are ants, some flying butterflies and that's about it. I just, oh, I just found a mantis and it caught an ant right in front of me. Um, I'm going to try to get a little bit closer. Alright, he's already eating the ant. I need to get my camera and see if I can get close enough. I managed to get a shot of the mantis devouring a carpenter ant. The prey went in abdomen first and I was lucky to get the head before it completely disappeared. To show you just how sharp this lens is, here is the original composition. I didn't move in closer because the mantis would have finished its meal within that short time. Oh, this guy is playing hide and seek. He was here and now he's gone on the other side of the tree. Completely camouflaged. When I first saw it, I thought it was a leaf, a dry leaf that was stuck to the bark. And I'm slowly beginning to realize that I'm going to have to stop at almost every tree I pass just to see what sort of life it is harboring. You've got to literally beat um, the camouflage, have a look at the tree from every angle. Head on, you're not going to see anything, but maybe moving around the park, you will see broken camouflage. Macro photography is beginning to feel incredibly addicting. So maybe I will invest in a focus rail that will give me some micro adjustments forward and backward. But for that, I'm going to need a subject that does not move too much. On my way back to the tamarind tree, I saw this caterpillar fall out of the grasp of a flying wasp. Almost paralyzed by the sting of that wasp, the caterpillar would have been scavenged upon by nearby ants. To demonstrate this behavior from an educational standpoint, I placed the immobilized caterpillar on the tree bark. Keep in mind that this caterpillar was already stung and what you're about to see would happen regardless of my interference. Simply by using their senses of smell, taste and touch, these carpenter ants have identified the paralyzed caterpillar as a vital source of nourishment. Ant colonies have several thousands of mouths to feed. These ants aren't eating the caterpillar. They're working together to take the food back home. To do this, the worker ants and even a few soldier ants use their mandibles and try their best to slice the caterpillar into manageable sizes. The macroverse is a very scary world to live in. Everyone around you can be out to get you especially when they arrive in numbers. The caterpillar may have only been 3 millimeters wide, 
but it was a herculean task that took dozens of ants to take apart although ants might not seem very significant to the general public they are marvels of evolution that can carry out multiple tasks of various complexities despite being blind they build elaborate colonies and can even perform structural repairs when damages occur they also play a vital ecological role on a global scale by decomposing wood back into soil thanks to the folks at venus optics we got to have an incredible insight into the macro world the laowa 90 mm ultra macro lens is indeed a brilliant piece of glass and it delivers stunning sharpness and clarity There were times when I wasn't able to get close enough to my subject but I could digitally punch in and still maintain a satisfactory resolution. To be a wildlife storyteller is to be an explorer of life and I'm glad that this little lens reminded me of that. To know more about the Laowa lens I used in this video check out the link in the description. There's also a 5% discount code that is valid until December 31st. If you enjoyed this video, then give it a like and subscribe for more. Your support will help me continue to tell stories of the wild and connect more people with the natural world. I'll see you in the White Panther and the Beasts of Snow.